really feeling anything right now. Are you feeling anything? Uh, no, I'm just excited to be there. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to go too. Should be fun. I'm hoping that we see a lot of interesting things and a lot of stuff happens. Yeah, I hope we can capture some stuff. Yeah. Tell us, you know, about how you own this place. What brought you to buy it? Yep. Yep, my name is Bill Steele. Uh, I was uh, born and raised in the Toronto area. Um, I moved here in 2017. I own the building. Um, I was going to plan for this to be a retirement place. I was I was looking for years at work. I had some weird hours, so I had a little bit of downtime when I first started at 3 in the morning. And I would look for, like, underground bunker, old abandoned warehouse, motel in the middle of nowhere, jail. Oh, oh geez, there's a jail. And uh, so I looked at this. It was a lot of money when it was first listed, and the guy kept dropping it. And I said, he's never dropped it down a certain price to go out and take a look at it. So I uh, flew out here, took a look at it, and didn't know anything about Dorchester. Didn't know anything about I didn't know it was so close to Nova Scotia either. I was a big, oh, my God. Um, I might have bought it sooner. Um, so, uh, yeah, ended up, um, uh, my son had passed away in, in 2017, so I kind of said, you know what, I'm just going to give up my job, quit early, um, separated from my wife, and uh, moved to the jail and sold all my stuff before Ontario and moved to a place I never heard of before, just like on the internet. Would you like to move to a place and start all over? And that's exactly what I did. I didn't know anybody here came here alone and uh, bought this old place, and I was excited about it being unique, and I'm going, wow, you know, maybe I could do a bed and breakfast or something like that, and and uh, I also had the initial thought that, you know what, if it's ever haunted, I'm screwed, <laughs> because nobody will come here, oh God, I don't want to spend all day or all night under the covers in here, because I'm a scary guy, so um, uh, it turns out that the place is pretty active, but it was... Uh, it, it, it's been amazing since I got here. Like it's, uh, it, you know, uh, before I moved here, and this is, uh, I've told a lot of people this story, and um, there was maybe one or two things in my life that happened. You know, I seen a, a candle float by me and with my dad, ooh, and I was actually in Edmonton, uh, New Brunswick. We used to go there, we had some family there. And uh, we used to go there every summer on our way to, to Nova Scotia, where my dad's from. And so this was my vacation every summer, passing through this area. And, and, I, and we seen like somebody partying out there in the middle of a field. We went there the next day and the grass was pristine and ooh, we don't know what it was. And that was about it. Then I moved here and it's been like a thousand, over a thousand things I could say have happened here. And it's just like, oh, that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I'm learning a lot about it and learning, uh, yeah, how to address it and yeah, having fun with it, having great fun, not scared at all. No one's ever been really kind of scared in here. Um, uh, but it's been, uh, it's, it's, it's been, it's been very entertaining. It's, it, it, very entertaining. Yeah. So how long have you and your spouse owned this place? Uh, five years now, yeah. Okay. 2017 came here. Yeah. And, uh, we've lived here from day one and started a bed and breakfast almost right away. Yes. And we got a CBC thing, uh, uh, Brett Ruskin was one of our first people. What do you think is the biggest pull for people to come here? Is it because, oh, I get to experience what a jail would be like, or is it because that it's haunted? It's um, it's the experience. You know, we get families, get a lot of young people that are, you know, they want to find out about uh, jail. We have a lot of students that come in. Uh, you know, they just want a unique setting to, to be in, or they're... Uh, um, going into the, the uh, enforcement, uh, education, stuff like that. And this is something to kind of throw in, kind of an experience and all that yeah. stuff. And uh, we've had people fly in from Vancouver and spend the night here. We've had some famous people. We've had sign waivers and say that uh, he was here and spent the night. And I'm like, ah. So yeah, it's it's cool, right? So it's it's been it's been really interesting. You get like-minded people too. So you know, I live in a kind of weird place here. It's unconventional and um, it, it's fun and it's very unusual. 
and we get the same type of people attracted to this place. So everybody, all of our customers, bed and breakfast, everybody, they're kind of on the same page, just being a little bit, hmm, what's up with this place? And, and the reason why I kind of bought this place too is uh, if I was driving by this old jail and I looked at it, the first thing I'd see is, I want to go in and check that out, man. Or I want to look into the basement. I want to look into whatever, one of the story, the history. What's up with that? You know, and I still drive around and I and I look at places and I, I, I explore different places and, and all that stuff. And I got my own place to explore right here. And there's some, there, this, uh, in the middle of winter, when nobody's around and we have no customers and we haven't seen anybody for 30 days, I'm in here having an adventure all by myself, trying to find a trap door or hidden messages or or who knows. The place still uh, entertains me to this day. So, so you talk about a trap door. There is a trap door up in Death Row. It's right outside the uh, the, the left, um, the main uh, cell there. It's in the floor. So there's a subfloor. There's a, another floor put on top of it. Pull that map back, you can actually see this in that photograph, the striped flooring. You can actually pull it up in that kind of hole and you see that striped flooring. The original flooring is still there, but I missed the trap doors over a little bit. So it's not, the door's not there. It's just an empty hole from what I understand. The door was shared between here and Amherst, Nova Scotia. So it ended up being there at the last thing and uh, it's probably lost now, lady. So what did they use the trap door for? Uh, to hang the people. Yeah, inside, wow. inside the building, yeah. The trap door was installed, so it was planked up, and then they would take the planks off the be hole. They'd install this mechanism with a lever, and they'd walk you on the door. They'd build a scaffold over you, like a triangular thing. They'd wrap the rope up in there, and the banister boys, they hung them back to back, literally back to back at one time, put the rope around them, and then they dropped them like that, and down they went. So the banister boys the weren't hanged out back, they were hanged in the Inside the building, the building yes. Right, in, right outside, and they hung right where, we're, right where we are on the other side. Wow. Yeah, and I thought that, see how this is, this is a little suspicious too, that how this is kind of dropped like the other side. The other side is dropped because it's hiding. But I don't know why this little portion is dropped, and that's one thing where I'm going to pop a hole in there and see what the heck's going on. You <laughs> never know, and uh, uh, this place has got a lot of uh, weird things, and, and uh, the bars repurposed, like these are the newer bars, but they had the flat white one, the flat, um, flat bar ones, but they weren't strong enough. They were cutting out of those, so... Yeah. So what's the craziest story that you've heard that has happened in here when it was actually a prison? Um, there's actually footage, some news footage of the former, uh, I have it on my phone, I can send it to you, and they tell some stories about how, um, I'll give you one, and it was Phil Lewis that, that was here, and he, so they lived up where we lived in that unit, and we know Joyce, Joyce is our friend, and, and um, so uh, I hope I get the story right. Um, so he was doing his things, he was the warden here, basically, so he was walking around doing his thing, and his wife was upstairs. So one of the uh, inmates um, uh, had his girlfriend over visiting or something like that. So he was having a visit. And what had happened was he grabbed the warden by knife, locked him in a cell, grabbed the keys, went up to the apartment, grabbed the wife. So he thought his wife was gonna be raped or murdered, whatever. Threw her in the cell. And then went and took the pills and stuff like that out of the apartment, grabbed the girlfriend, drove over towards somewhere, and then um, somehow got shot in the car by the RCMP. I guess they caught him and, and shot him. And yeah, so that was a close one that happened here. Beatings in here, there's been murders inside here, up in the... Uh, suicides in here, when Phil started, he started in... Uh, in the 50s at some point and uh one of his first jobs he was hired to say congratulations he said oh by the way in cell number uh i think seven so, so six seven seven eight on the other side second one in uh, there's a guy hanging in the cell can you cut him down and and uh we're gonna have somebody come over take him over so that's that's uh, something so i i knew that story i'm gonna tell you another little story <laughs> you can check them too his name is Huey Lawrence, and I don't think you mind me saying his name, but anyways, uh, when we moved here, uh, Huey was helping me out, and uh, 
And I knew that that had happened in that cell. So uh, he was staying with me for a couple of months at that point. And uh, I said, Huey, are you, you going to pay rent in that place or are you just going to get a free room here or something like that? He says, oh, I'd like a free room and I'll do a little bit of work. I said, okay, we'll work something out. Take cell number eight. So I put him in that cell. And uh, he, the next morning he said, you know, I felt somebody like poking me at, at night and this and that. I'm going, Huey, come on, man. You're, you know, you're like 300 pounds. Move over a little bit. We'll move the bed over and readjust and stuff like that. And so the next morning, he's got all his stuff and he's dragging it out to his truck. And for the next three months, he slept in his van and would not sleep back inside his building. Yeah. He wow. said, you don't want to know what happened in that room. He said, but I'm not sleeping in that building anymore. Wow. And I didn't ask him. And yeah, he's come back. And yeah. Well, I want to ask you because as a team, we keep getting pulled to your backyard. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, what do you guys feel is going on back there? Uh, there's a bunch of people back there. Bunch of people as in? Uh, inmates that were hung here. Okay. Buried back there. I know the Bannister brothers are there for sure. Yeah. There's another person, B-U-C-K, that's back there as yes. well. Yeah. Uh, there's somebody in our parking lot as well. It's been documented in our books. I don't know if she showed you, but there's a few books with the history. Um, it's got a lot of good information in sure. it. Um, yeah, and then, and then I got a call when I bought this place that they said there's a lot of people buried back there, not just the number one and we got like a number of like 27 or 17 and with a lot of people they said when the bodies were abandoned same as up the penitentiary they just got from somewhere yeah. so and they might have did this might have been a bit of a, a hanging mill i think maybe because it was indoors if they need to hang somebody in december you know they're not going to be outdoor thing they might have done it in here and yeah. this is an incarnation of a jail from 1801 i think it's still on the property if you look in the basement there's kind of remnants of another foundation inside i'm pretty darn sure that this is exactly where it was because it was inside the courthouse the keeler house mm -hmm. so this is the only place and there's no other foundation sitting around so mm -hmm. i'm sure that make us the oldest jail in canada by the way <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, wow. so yeah that would yeah. be uh that would be so something. there's a lot of bodies buried yeah yeah, there's, okay. yeah this thing's going on we've had other i've seen some people do stuff with flashlights back there and just turn them on and then walk up here and do all the rgbg stuff and i'm going holy shit i'm getting out of here man <laughs> you don't like it. it i'm just you know i, I don't want to be cut the grass and going oh that's what they said you know something happened and i got my own feelings it's yeah. kind of weird and different people it's funny that uh, you know i could i have an idea where they are within you know a few 50 feet maybe yeah i have an idea um I have a feeling where something's going on over on the other side, over by the Cubit house on that side of the hill. Yeah. And uh, like a high number of people I could bring here and uh, they, I tell them the story. I said, yeah, they're, they're buried over here and this and that. And 90% will look over at the other side and I get a feeling right over there. Yeah. And they point to the same bloody spot yeah. all the time. Here's here and they go same area. So yeah. that tells me, that tells me a lot of, yeah, because I was told that when they put them in the ground, they would put liner's lime on them. The, yeah, to eat everything up and stuff like that. Yeah. So we don't even know if we'll be able to find much of remnants. Yeah, of the, uh, but there has been a bone found back there. Right? Ground pe penetrating radar and stuff like that. Yeah. We found a number of things back there, but we don't yeah. we don't know anything. We don't go. We're not legally allowed to search or dig for the bodies. Oh, okay. I've only done ground explorations just to see where the original ground is. Yeah. They were only buried four feet deep as well. Okay. And uh, they're buried with a bunch of rope on top, um, wow. so I don't know if that um, w would have eaten up the rope. Mm -hmm. um, in the museum next door, they actually have the hood that the boys were hung with, and a piece of that rope as well. Wow. That some of you taken as a souvenir, let's say, and then like, upon their death, I guess they gave it to the museum, wow. which is neat. I've tried to acquire it, but I couldn't get it. Yeah. Well, Bill, you have quite a place here. You've built a real experience for people. Yeah. You yeah. know, whether it be the paranormal part or, you know, the the jail itself and having that experience. So yeah. um we thank you for allowing us to come in oh, as a for team. Sure. I love having people I love having people yeah. here and sharing. And you guys are wonderful and hosts. Getting, so uh, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Natasha yeah. does an awesome job. She, sure she, does. she just uh 
That's your thing. I stay out of the way. I get in trouble. I, sometimes, and sometimes I talk too much and I just blab on about stuff. But I just, you know, when I get into it, I just like, I like that's from Saw as well. That sign up there. And, oh my goodness, we'll have a good uh, shot of that. And uh, yeah, it's. Um, I, I love the stories. I love talking about it. And I and I think of all the different things I've done. I'm going, man, that's pretty pretty neat stuff. And yeah. you know, my my skulls and and uh, and some other stuff I got, which yeah. And um, yeah, and people and the people in the community they they offer me stuff up and and, and make things interesting and nice. you know there's a copper mine that's close to here that uh, that uh, that I used to go to and stuff like that it's all closed off now mm -hmm. and yeah. but and just looking at old buildings and, and investigating them and yeah. stuff like that I love that right. stuff and yeah it's I tell people the younger people I said you know what and and you know what this is the honest God truth. Growing up, I kind of wanted uh, like a Ghostbusters. I seen that headquarters, <laughs> yeah, and with the containment thing in the basement and and the, and the hearse and all that. Jesus, I've had the I've had the hearse, I've had the same car, and now I got this cool place like this, and I ain't giving it up for nothing, man. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna ask you, are you guys gonna retire in hers? This, this is it. Guys? This is my retirement. Then when I moved here, I said that's it. I'm retired, and I've never been working so hard in my life. <laughs> I've been doing so much stuff. I'm gonna get a kick out of it. I can't stop. It's nuts. I'm doing stuff with people in Ontario. I'm doing online stuff and doing some real estate stuff and still doing this and trying to book stuff and TV shows and experiences. And we've had CBC come here and, and interview famous people. They brought the, the guy that won the Stanley Cup from uh, Dieppe. They brought him here and did the interview. Oh. Um, uh, the, the goalie coach. And, and, he's, and he won it again this year, the Stanley oh. Cup. Nice. So at five degrees they, the, was the thing. They shot... Uh, a couple TV shows and the episodes and stuff yeah. like that. I, I love that stuff. Yeah, it's all about keeping busy and well, and uh, mm -hmm. you live a longer life if you keep busy. Oh, every day absolutely. And keep going. It's when you sit yeah. there and do retire and stop and sit there, uh, you're dead. Yeah. So I'm gonna just keep going yeah. until I break down. Well, we will definitely be back here. So thank That's you for your for time, sure. Bill. No problem yes. at all. Thank you. Okay. All righty. Okay. Tell me your name, please. Who? Where? We are at the Dorchester Jail, and we want to know who is with us. Why? Because we want to prove that you're still here. Tell us your name. Maybe. Did you die here? Yes. How did you die? Help me. Help you how? It was a man. It was a man. What did the man do? What did the man do? Yes. Can you say hi? What? Say hi to me. No. Why not? Why not? See you. No, stay here with us. Stay here. Tell me your name. Tell us your name. Tell us your name. Were you in the dark side? The dark. You were on the dark side. Did you die, John? Here? Thank you, John. You died here. Are you buried out back? Are you buried out back, John? John, are you buried out back? John, you can talk to us. Are you buried out back, John? Were you executed here? John, were you executed here? Hello. Hello, John. 
were you executed here? What? Were you executed here, John? Did you lose your life here at Dorchester? When you... When you what? Come. When I come where? When you... When I come where? John. Who else is here with us? I want a name. What did I do? I don't know. You tell us. What did you do? Did you hurt someone, John? Yes. Did you kill them? A girl. So you came here on death row? Were you on death row, John? Are you sorry? Are you sorry that you killed the girl, John? Yeah. Are you out back? Are you buried in the backyard, John? I am. Do you want help, John? We can help you. John? Do you, yes, please. Tomorrow night, John, we're going to do a ceremony that will help you to cross over and you will be at peace. Do you want that, John? Do you want to be at peace? Do you want to be at peace, John? Yes or no, John? Yes. That was quite something. That was really quite something. I can't remember exactly how I worded it. And you said yes, and then you said a girl. Yeah. And then um, asked if he wanted help. He said yes. I said, are you in the backyard, John? And he said yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was quite something, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, really made a lot of sense. Yeah, that was awesome. Well, like, this is, like... Can you hear it very well? Like, this is what I hear. Who other than John is here? Is anyone else here with us? Relax. Okay, we're, we're relaxed. Can you tell us your name, please? What were you put in jail for? Hello. What's your name? Ronald. Ronald? What did you do to get in jail, Ronald? A lot of a lot of what? What did you That's do? That's right. That's right, what? Yeah. Get more. Get more what?
get more of what? Get more of what, Ronald? Figure out. Figure out what? <laughs> Figure out what, Ronald? Speakers, but I can hear him say in my head, I killed them. Who did you kill? And he's crying. So what was he showing you? He was making me feel a lot of remorse, like a lot of remorse. I heard the words, just like what you had gone through, um, about killing and killing. He, but he was saying, like I was hearing through the um, through the spirit box, but I was also hearing in my head, I killed them. So there was more than one, I killed them, and it felt very female connected. And then he was feeling like so much remorse. And he was trying to make me feel this remorse. Like he was so sorry. But then at the same time, he, he felt, honestly, he felt really mentally deranged. Mm. It was like he was zapping me. He was zapping me. He came in really, really close. Oof. Wow. You know how when they get so close to me and then I start to vomit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, whoo. Wow. <coughs> Holy smokes. How are you feeling now? <coughs> I feel good, but he made me all phlegmy, like, because he was coming up in my chest. Mm. Yeah. Whew. <sighs> I feel that he's left me now, but <sighs> he was really close. <sighs> oh. Do you think that he's on the dark side? Yeah. They're all over the place in here. Mm hmm. Yeah, they're definitely not just over there. Yeah, kind of like they have free reign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the jail cell jail cells are open. Yeah. Oh. Excuse me, holy oh, crap. Oh. Whenever a spirit gets too close to me, it's like they're trying to come into my body. It makes me want to vomit, and I start coughing and gagging. So. That's a huge sign that that's what just happened. Keep it going. Seven. There's seven spirits in this room right now. Who else is here with us? That's it. Oh, that's it. That looks beautiful. Keep it going. Yeah, yeah. I'm done. Yeah. But I saw it go off. You letting somebody else take a turn? Come on, guys, light it right up. That's it. Come on, guys. That's it. Show us that you're here. Who else is here? Tell me your name, please. Tell me your name. What's your name? That's 
second time I've heard that name. So Matt, you're here with the Matt, were you a prisoner? Come on, Matt. Who are you? I have a feeling something here wants to go to church. Do you, you, would you like to go to church? Yeah. Do you wish that you were at church instead of here? I feel like we're talking to different people. Are we talking to two different people right now? Yeah. Are you okay? I'm okay. That was like almost French. K2 just spiked. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, perfect. That's good. Can you make it go to red? Keep it going. That's awesome. Come on. Can you give us your name? You have it? Somewhat. Churches. Is this the woman who got pregnant by the officer? By the prison guard? Maybe is this the woman that's in the back? Do you watch over these people?
Oh my god. Back away. Back away. Back away now. I said back up. So after me and Adrian were down in the common room that night, when we had gone to go to sleep, it was a very eerie. We went to lay down and that was the most, I was scared. And that was the first time I've ever actually been scared. I slept with the blanket over my head, like a little kid when they get scared. Kept feeling like someone was standing in the cell with us, just watching us sleep. And it's, it was just so loud. It was like, like Adrian was saying, it sounded like you were down in New York, all the chatter, and all the chatter was coming from the dark side. Um, we both just kept on trying to fall asleep, fall asleep, and Adrian and I, we both, two different times, we both felt something touch us and it was on our side very uneasy feeling and then i kept on waking up to the bed shaking like profusively shaking and when it got to about 7 30 in the morning the bed just started shaking again and i said i had enough i got up and I walked upstairs and I wasn't able to fall back asleep for a few hours after that. It was scary. May we be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us and be our protection against all evil and negativity on all levels. May the divine light of the Archangels surround us with their love. We ask that all negative thought forms, lost souls, residues, elements, and fragments be permanently healed and taken into the light, that all may be freed according to the highest will of God. May we be purified and blessed upon every level of our being in the work that we do and be given more divine power and protection. Thy will be done. Thank you. Amen. In the name of all that is goodness and light, surround our circle in the white light of holy protection. We ask that no harm befalls or follows, follows the protected circle. We call upon Archangel Michael, call in the watchtower of the west, the watchtower of the east, the watchtower of the south, and the watchtower of the north. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here tonight to, to, uh, to share the voices of those that have gone before us. And we ask that you allow us to have the beautiful opportunity, if any of them would like to go on to that, that next level of understanding for them, that they be open to that. Um, we also ask that you have your hand upon every single member of this team and the owners and their daughter as we go about this evening. And that uh, we ask the spirits that they participate with us. And we're not here to cause any harm by any means. We just want to tell your story and show the world that you exist. Whew. Lilith, we ask that you be here with us if needed. So, um, ladies, you've never been on an investigation before. You've had a little, a little flavor 
already. So it is very, very exciting. We're so thankful to be here, Natasha, and that you've allowed you. us to be here. Um, full on tonight, guys, this is a wonderful opportunity for us. Watch your backs. Okay, we are going to give a little symbol, Kate, if you don't mind, on the backs of everybody before we leave. At any time, if you feel anything that makes you nervous or uneasy, you let us know, okay? Um, we are pretty seasoned at this now, so, and especially, not that I figure this is going to happen, but we need to say it. If one of us says, go now, just follow. Okay? Just follow. Yeah, so. We'll keep recording. Yes. <laughs> Yes. 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 Actually, thank you, Caitlin, for mentioning that. Everything is to be recorded. Okay. It doesn't matter how minute it might seem. We're having conversations. Everything is to be recorded tonight. Um, we have lots of equipment that we're going to be sharing. Teams, we already know our teams, so our teams are going to go out to different spots. End of the evening, we're all going, like, each team's going to have a chance to go back, and then at the end of the night, we're all coming into that backyard. Okay, that's one of the reasons we always know, right? Is that there's a reason why we go somewhere. So that is drawing us big time. Big time. Yeah. Yeah. I can't say for certain what they are, but you know how people mark lines on the walls for days? Yeah. Oh my god. It makes me wonder if they used to actually keep inmates down here as a form of punishment or torture. Oh my okay. god. But you were asking about electrocution. Yes. So down here is where, elect where all the like all the electric panels are. So it makes me wonder if they would have water down here and almost like um electroshock therapy. Yeah. But in a very cruel, like it's cruel. Yeah, they almost look like scratches on the wall. They're intentional marks, right? Yeah. For sure. Like if somebody with, that's almost like carved in, like count how many days they're down here. That's exactly my thoughts. Yeah. They're, they're too deep and too, and almost like too squared off to be. Uh, accidental. Like, yeah. Oh, they're not accidental. They're, what was here, do you know? Um, so, there is, I, I see this allegedly um, a network of underground tunnels from the penitentiary. Um, there's a tunnel that goes from the penitentiary to the guard row. There's a tunnel that goes from the penitentiary to the Keeler House. And there's one that goes from the Keeler House to the jail here. Um, in all honesty, i love to tear that down, but I'm scared I'm going to find a skeleton behind it. is right here. Yes, I am a friend. We're here to talk to you and get your story. We're not here to hurt anybody. Change. He's getting a little. What do you want to change? Come through, and she. What do you want us? He's talking about her father. It's a very Nature Irish. Change. Oh. Did her father? Did he work here? Who's your father? Your father. What's this for? What? Work. Did you use to work here? 
We uh, we just asked Joyce. a little girl if she worked Joyce. if her dad worked here. Who's Joyce? Joyce is one of the women that was raised here. Her father was a warden. She's still alive. Oh my gosh! So that must be her dad. Ah, uh, yeah. Are you looking for your daughter, Joyce? Who's in this room with me? Who's in here? Who's lighting up my lights? Can you tell me your name? We've come a long ways to talk to you. Were you dreading this short walk out of yourself? Just to stand out here in the hallway knowing that this is the last time that you'll be stepping in this hallway? Down. Oh, she's sure standing on that thing. Did you go down through the floor? This is the last place you stood. Wow, well, she's right to red. Pardon? She's right to red. Who's in here with me? Can you give me a name? Were you the first to go or was it your brother? Give me a name so I know who's in here with me. Is it Arthur or Daniel? Leave here. What was it? My, I think that was my phone. It just said leave here. Was that yours or was that mine? That was mine. Nurse. Nurse, leave here. Nurse. I was asking for nurse. Leave here. Yeah, leave here and nurse. Why do you want us to leave? I see you. Oh my gosh. If you see us, come tell talk. Portal. Come talk. To portal. Us. Come sit down with me and have a conversation. What's a portal? Where's the portals? Yes, where is the portal? It's an opening for spirits to travel through. Look at this. This place is crazy. Are you trapped here or do you travel back and forth between a portal and just come visit here? Are you here all the time? Bride. Who was Bride? Is that how your mother got such a short sentence? Did she bribe somebody? Wow. Why? That's what we want to know. We want to know why. Why did your mother do such a short sentence and you and your brother were sentenced to death? I was the last thing that you said before being hanged. You were put back to back to your brother, and you had the rope put around your neck, and you asked, why is the rope around my neck? It's a little tight. Can you please loosen it? That was the last thing that you said. Is that true? Yeah. Do you feel any remorse for what you did? No. So there's 27 bodies buried outside. 
Who else? And wow. Wow. Who else? Give us another name besides Daniel and Arthur. Give us another name of someone who's out in the, that's buried out in the back row. show us that you're still here. You've been awful quiet. These are ways for you to communicate with us. Who are you? Are you? Behind me. Oh. There's only the wall that's behind me. Oh my god, that's so weird because I just moved because I looked behind and I seen it was all black and I got a really bad vibe and I was like, I'm coming in here and that's when I come in here and then behind you. Like as soon as I got to it and pointed at the camera, I was like, no, don't. Well, if you're still here with us, light up the K2 meter like you were doing earlier. You had it lit right up to the red. Can you do that again for us? That's it. Good job. Can you go right up to the red? Right up to the red. Come on, you can do it. There Take you it go. Close. Take and it right up there. Once more. Come on, once more. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> Don't need to be sorry. There you go. Come on, a little bit a little bit more. A little bit more right to the red. I know that must take a lot of energy. Must take a lot of energy. Thank you so much for letting us know that you're here. What year is it? Tell us the last year that you remember. Do what? Who? 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 I said two. Do you remember eighteen seventy five? Nineteen oh five? 1925, 1945, 1985, 1965, is that the last year you remember? So around 1965, is that the last year you remember? Betty. Who's Betty? That's my mother. Who's Betty? One of the citizens. It's almost like something Satan something. I know. Ugh. Oh, okay. Defiant. Defiant? Did you say defiant? Do you want to? Do you want to talk to somebody else besides me? Oh. 
The noises that come out of that are unreal. Can you say the name of the person you want to talk to? Can you tell me your name? How many people are here in this room? I'm not talking to spirits. How many of us are here trying to communicate with you? Sound like something old. I know the Yes, I'm old. You don't have to remind me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did. I feel like I'm starting to get chest pains. You're not having a heart attack, are you? No, I'm not, but as actually as soon as you said that, I just rem I just remembered that thing was saying heart attack earlier. She also nurse. She's good. <laughs> Yeah, they have pressure on her chest. Are you scared? Are you stuck? Do you want to cross over? Light it right up to red if you want to cross over. All the way. Are there any females? Are there any females in this room that would like to speak? Mary? Mary, are you here with us? Angela's name came through earlier. Is there an Angela here? Yep. Mm. 200 what? Are there 200 spirits here? Is there a spirit here that can touch our light and make it light up? Is there a is there a Patricia here with us? So back off or fuck off. Patricia. Come on, Patricia, come talk to us. She says, call me Patty. Ah <laughs> Thanks, Patty. if it's true that one of the inmates got impregnated by one of the guards. That's right. Light it right up to the red if that's true, please. Right up. How many women are here? I 
Apparently you are. Barely touching her K2? Are you just toying with us or what? Why don't you come and touch Michelle's hair? Give it a really big yank. She won't hurt ya. Oh, my head hurts really bad all of a sudden. How do you feel? Guys, coming down here, just go slow down the show. Julia is pretty bad down here. Woo! Whoa! <laughs> look at the K2. Oh man. It's going insane. Oh my god. Oh look at this down here. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. Alright, you want to turn your headlight lamp off? We're good. Okay. Okay, can you still see anything? Not really. Okay, well, we'll turn the headlamp back on <laughs> for a few minutes. So, look at this. Look at this. Oh, oh, oh. oh it stopped just like that. Stopped. Wow. So, right about here is where Caitlin got touched on her back yesterday. Holy, heavy, heavy, heavy. Huh. I'm going to turn my spirit box on. Is there anyone down? Oh my, it's still going insane. Is there anyone down here who wants to talk to us? Come on. Like, there's no way that that would go off. These are just straps. It just cut me out. Cut me out. Okay. All right. Yep, yeah, that's good. Okay, lights are off. Do you want to get in front of me? <laughs> what? I just I stuck my hand in that cell with the key too, and I just yeah. Can't even close it. Oh. Who's here? Pass in here. Yeah, what's your name? No, it's not. Is there anyone who died here? Just stopped. Who's here? Did you spend time? Who here went to death row? Yeah, this bug is too creeped out down here. Yeah, this bug is too creeped out down here. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Really? Yeah, let's go. Seriously. Okay, when Kathy says go, let's go. Oh, shoot. I'm not ready. I'm not ready for it. I'm not ready for it. I just got that. Mm. Oh. Oh. My head hurts. 
I felt like they were starting to all just like everybody. Whoosh. Yep. Because I was sitting here earlier today and I was just looking over there and I saw things floating above that door. Oh. I did not like that. No. Did not like that at all. I need to take him. I prefer the basement over that hallway. Mm. Michelle, I was just literally about to say, Michelle, be careful. No, I can't do that. Yeah. There's a man standing there. Mm. Yeah. Did anything happen to you while you were here? Anything that you feel that's unfair? We've heard that not everybody... At night? At night? At, at night time? We heard not everybody was treated fairly here. We just want to get your side of the story. Maybe even help you out. Okay. Tell us your story, please. Whoa, what was that? Now I'm mad. Now I'm mad. Are you mad? Why are you mad? Do you know why? You know why? No, I don't know why. Same voice. Tell me why you're mad. Come on, if you're mad, make that K2 go up. I don't think you're mad, you're just trying to intimidate us and it's not gonna work. So if you're mad, make that K2 go up, make it spike to red. Or get to me, get to be. Disturbed. Okay, so. If you're here with us, can you make one of our lights go off? We have a K2 and we have a flashlight. We also have an EMF. In the attic. Something like... Did it just say, hey, Adam? Is there someone here by the name of Adam? If there's someone here by the name of Adam, can you please come step step forward and talk to us? Is that you, Adam? That was a kid. 
it's a plan to All right, I'm going to close my app. This is your last chance to say anything before I do. Is there anything that you want us to know? Hampton? All right, I'm closing that out. Bye. How are you feeling? All right. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel a certain, certain way right now. Um, Earlier, I was getting a little bit of mixed feelings. It was a little bit of anger and a little bit of sorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, it could make sense that you're angry that you're here and sorry that you have done something. Or it could be a mixture of a lot of things. But there's a lot of emotions here. Um, not everybody that was here deserved treatment that they got. Yep. For sure. Arthur and Daniel's mother, were you here? I don't know. No, and then a man's voice behind it. So if you weren't here, how did you just know to say no to us? Where were you? Arthur, Daniel, was your mom here? Is it true that she was the mastermind behind it all? She only got six months and you guys got the death? Come talk to us. We're not here to hurt you. How many women were here at a time? And who are you? Treat you differently. Treat who differently? Did they treat the women different than the men? Mm -hmm. That's what I thought it said. Were the men treated badly here? <laughs> what used to happen down in the basement?
I don't think good things happened down the basement. Was a lot of bad things happened down there? What about me? I'm only here to hear your story. That's all. Do you want to tell us your side of the story? Are you buried out in the backyard? He's with you? Who's with us? Sound like I said I kill. Are you a killer? Is that why you're here? This is Jessica's first time on an investigation. Why don't you come scare the shit out of her? Let's have some fun. Yes, it is her first. It is her first. hair tug. Not hard. You can't hurt her, but just touch her. You're not allowed to hurt any of us, but you can touch us. Feels like there's someone behind me. <laughs> <laughs> That's freaking me out. <laughs> Are you standing behind her? Tug her hair, just lightly. Oh, someone just touched my head. <laughs> you know, right at the top of my head. Thank you. If you just touched her, thank you. Now can you touch Dave? He's the big guy. He's not scared of you. Easy for you to say. <laughs> you said touch? You said touch? That, that's what I just heard too. We said touch. Are you still picking on Jessica? Yeah. Like, it really feels like there's somebody behind me right now. Trust it. Trust it. Who did you trust? God is... You trust God? That was plain as day. Mm -hmm. Yep. Say your name nice and clear for us. Still somebody behind you? Oh, it feels like it. I, I can't even... I don't have my phone. I can't even take pictures of her. Do you have your phone right there? I do. Take some pictures? As they come with their arms outstretched towards you, they're ready to welcome you. You are worthy. You are worthy. Allow this material life that pulled you down to be let go. We send you beautiful energy. We hold that space for you as you make that transition safely 
let it go and just be free. We ask for a blessing. We ask for a blessing upon this land. Anything, anything that is unearthly, anything that is of lower negative energies, in the name of Jesus, we, we demand that you leave these souls alone. We demand that you do not hurt this family here. We demand that you do not hurt any more guests that come through. We've gotten your message and that's fine, we'll go. But you are not to come with us. We bathe every single one of us in the blood of Jesus. You are not welcome. You stay where you're at. Because if we have to come back here and kick ass, we will. So you stay here in the name of Jesus. And all of those beautiful souls, Tom, I hear you. All of you beautiful souls that have chosen to leave this damnation and go to that beautiful heaven. We wish you well and we send you so many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen.